Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back again. This should be a quick little bit about the basics of fibromuscular dysplasia. Still figuring out the... Uh... All righty. Fibromuscular dysplasia. Uh, in essence, it's a non-atherosclerotic, non-inflammatory angiopathy involving the medium-sized arteries. Multiple possible etiologies is kind of a combination. There may be a component of vessel wall ischemia, and histologically there may be few vasovasorum uh, and within the uh, vessels. Um, there's external influences from tobacco, certainly hormonal. It's uh, more common in women, much more common in women. And inherited as maybe autosomal dominant. About 10% of the people will have a family member that has uh, uh, fibromuscular dysplasia. Histologically, uh, often they, in the distal main renal artery, uh, the, and the renal artery is, uh, is one of the most common areas uh, of, of uh, fibromuscular dysplasia. Uh, medial fibrodysplasia is the most common. Uh, it occurs uh, in 60 to 70 percent of renal arteries, and bilateral disease in 35 percent, and you can also see a decrease in the mean renal mass and length. Uh, classifications certainly look at the, uh, the vessel walls, uh, with the medial being the most, uh, the most uh, common uh, medial fibroplasia. As you can see, the medial ones have the angiographic appearance of the string of beads, which is a common catchphrase for looking at, uh, at these vessels. Intimal fibroplasia, uh, uncommon in about 5 percent, and, and usually in children and the very young. You see smooth focal stenoses angiographically. The adventitial is a long stenoses that are quite and quite rare. And uh, the uh, and so if you look if, as you look at that, medial is the most common. String of beads is the angiographic catchphrase. Uh, historically, it's uh, um, you have arterial hypertension, often acute onset. You'll see a w women greater than three hypertensive drugs, elevated creatinine, young age certainly, uh, less than 30 often. Uh, on physical exam, uh, not too focal in a hypertensive patient. Occasionally it can be discovered with an abdominal brewy and sometimes a flash pulmonary edema. Ultrasound is a, is a, a way initially of looking for uh, renal artery disease. Uh, nowadays, uh, commonly found, uh, discovered, are worked up with an MRA, CTA, are sometimes in incidentally found with these imaging studies we have. Uh, angiography is still the gold standard, um, but oftentimes it's, a, it's kind of, it can be a delayed uh, uh, diagnostic test uh, w um, when they finally may get to this due to all the other uh, uh, non-invasive means. Uh, but this is an example of a, uh, a right selective renal artery angiogram uh, showing uh, the string of beads uh, of, of fibromuscular dysplasia. Uh, where, uh, and, and you'll kind of see where it's a bit aneurysmal, where it's, as you'll see it bubbling out, alternating between stenoses and, and, uh, and uh, dilatations. Uh, there's no real medical treatment for fibromuscular dysplasia. Uh, treating the hypertension is uh, certainly uh, uh, with a variety of, uh, of uh, available medications. Surgery, for, so intervention is, uh, is uh, as far as the uh, treatment is as far as treating it. And it can be satisfactory in that you can actually cure people uh, with this. Uh, so uh, angiographically, uh, angioplasty is the, uh, is the primary treatment. Uh, and again, this is an example of, uh, of the fibromuscular uh, dysplasia and before and uh, after angioplasty uh, with a uh, reduction of the uh, associated gradient. Rarely do these people require a stent, and stents are definitely to be avoided as, the, as recurrent stenoses can uh, be upwards of 20%. When, if a stent is placed, and if you think about putting in a stent in a, in a young woman uh, with small vessels, 
and this type of pathology is something you'd like to avoid. Uh, and this is another example, this is perimedial dysplasia, uh, a little more focal, a bit of narrowing before and after angioplasty. Well, you're right, I can't figure this out. Yeah, and, uh, and so once again, uh, angioplasty is the uh, go-to treatment. And surgical therapy, open surgical therapy is generally reserved for uh, angioplasty complications thrombosis, dissection, perforation, or multiple angioplasty attempts and recurrences. Uh, the open repair, um, again, is generally for a failure of endovascular therapy, often a transverse or a subcostal skin incision. You expose the kidney, and uh, you all had a good uh, anatomic uh, review, and, and Really, the decision with is on the right side. If you go over or, below, or behind uh, uh, the uh, cave on the left side, you have to deal with the uh, uh, left renal vein. What conduit do you use? Do you use a, a saphenous vein, hypogastric artery? Uh, hypogastric artery is often used in, in children, but I can't say that I've ever had to do this. And again, fortunately, angioplasty is quite successful in this. And then lastly, synthetic stuff. Uh, Mark Davies and the group are, uh, here uh, a while back looked at the uh, long-term outcome of their percutaneous therapy for renal fibromuscular dysplasia. They had 29 women. They all had uh, hypertension, blood pressure over than 140 on at least two medicines. They had a uh, primary patency in the 66%, assisted in 87. Uh, stenosis rate at five years, about 28%. So, endovascular therapy for fibromuscular dysplasia is effective and durable, and surgery it should be reserved for recalcitrant lesions. Thank you.